Coming into tonight's matchup, Mike Woodson and his Hoosiers boast a two win, one loss Big Ten record with a couple quality early wins in the conference over Maryland and Michigan, but their loss to Nebraska this past week was not pretty. And Mike Woodson did not sugarcoat his words afterwards saying, quote, our starting two guards were awful tonight. So against Ohio State, Indiana would look to turn the page. Let's head to a packed house at Assembly Hall. Ohio State with an early five point lead over the Hoosiers off the turnover. Khalil Ware to CJ Gunn, who slams it in and one. Hoosiers deficit cut to two points. 47 seconds to go now. Xavier Johnson's second game back from injury sinks to three and one. Hoosiers head into halftime down a point. Second half, Zed Key wide open under the basket. Easy feed, easy slam. 48 45, Buckeyes. IU in the midst of an 11 to 2 point run. Malik Renew ties it up with a 348 all. And how about another two handed rush? This time it's Roddy Gale Jr., Ohio State, up by two. But Xavier Johnson, his return is felt in this game. Renew kicks it to the X Man in the corner. Money. Indiana takes the one point lead. And Malik Renew, putting together a heck of a game off the double team, lays it in. He had 27 points leading Indiana to, to a solid Big Ten win, final score 71-65. Indiana tallied a season low in turnovers with just four, a far cry from the 19 turnovers committed against Nebraska. Next up, the Hoosiers will face Rutgers on the road on Tuesday. Yeah, Trisha, you're absolutely right. It is really, really cold here in Kansas City, set to be one of the coldest games in NFL history as Miami and Kansas City are set to face off this evening at Arrowhead Stadium. The big story of the evening is Tyreek Hill making his return to Arrowhead for the first time since he, would, he was traded a couple of seasons ago. He said to the media this week that it's just another game for him and that he hasn't even texted his former teammate Patrick Mahomes since their Week 8 loss, the Dolphins' Week 8 loss in Germany. That score was 21 to 14. The Chiefs looking to make it back to their second consecutive Super Bowl and win their second consecutive Super Bowl. Miami looking to make a statement as a real playoff contender here this evening in a frigid Arrowhead Stadium. Trisha, back to you in the studio. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Indiana Men's Soccer Weekly, presented by Big Ten Plus. I'm Ian Plaskoff, alongside me is Andrew Hillsman, and Andrew, Indiana is coming off of a 1-0 loss at Northwestern, detrimental to their postseason hopes, but the Hoosiers outshot the Wildcats 21-4, left the game scoreless. Indiana had won their last four matches and hadn't lost in six consecutive, just a back-breaking performance there in Evanston. So as they head into the late part of the season here, what do you think Indiana needs to improve on? You know, Ian, you're absolutely right. It's a brutal way to lose that game on the road in Evanston. 1-0 loss off of a ticky-tack header that you have 21 shots compared to Northwestern's four, and you still end up losing that game. It's a brutal momentum killer. So for me, I think Indiana, they just need to cl clean up those loose ends as a team. The shot selection needs to be better. They've had so many shots on goal this year. They're just not finding the back of the net and that the selection really does need to be better. And those goals are going to come with that improved offensive discipline. I really do believe that. So tonight against Trine, we're going to get it into it just next. That's got to be their focus, shot selection. Yeah, you talk about putting the ball in the back of the net and no greater opportunity than against Division Three Trine out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Trine, solid in D3 play on the year, no problem, solid in their conference play, but they have not played a Division I team all year. So Indiana looking to use their difficulty level from the Big Ten and move that into a not as difficult opponent, right? A little bit more wiggle room for them in this match. Obviously, you want to win, but what else can you see them accomplish? Well, as you said, they have a lot to accomplish, and this is a good way to do it. You have leeway to make mistakes, and Trine is an inferior D3 team. We saw this with the women's team earlier in the year when they played Hanover. They shut them out 8 nothing. I think this is going to be that same sort of game for the men's team, and I know it men's versus women's soccer, but it's the same thing. The men's team has to sharpen up some things, get the knife to the grindstone, and get things working. So my key player for tonight is going to be Tommy Mahala. He leads the team in shots and shots on goal, and he was top three in the team in goals the past two years. He's not found the net in the regular season. He's scoreless, scored once in the exhibition against Louisville all the way back in August. This has got to be the game to get him back on track, and I really see him finding that maybe once, twice. The shots are there. One's got to fall at some point, point. I think tonight's going to be that night. And after tonight, getting that offense tuned up, then the Hoosiers head into a crucial matchup against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights in the final Big Ten match of the season. Rutgers on the year 5-6-3, 3-3-1 in conference play. 
So Mahalik, a guy that's got to step up, the whole team as a whole has to step up because this is a must-win game. What are your keys to the game? Well, assuming you win this game against Tri, which everyone's expecting Indiana to do so. It's a D1 versus D3 matchup. Indiana have a league. They're going to be expected to win that game. Big Ten opponent, final regular season game against Rutgers on Sunday. That's a must win. It's win at all costs for the Indiana Hoosiers. Somebody's got to step up. It doesn't matter. I don't care who it is. Somebody's got to do it, and Indiana cannot afford a loss or draw to remain in range for an at-large bid in the top 48 of RPI in the NCAA. So the key has to be getting out to an early lead. You can't be waiting until late in the game like you've done a lot this year to make your move, get shots on goal early, get the balls into the, in front of the net, one's going to fall, and then play from there. You, it's so much better to be playing in front than chasing or trying to get out to a 1-0 lead or late in the game. So much better. Rutgers has had Indiana's number late in the season. Last year, the Scarlet Knights hosted the Hoosiers in the tournament of the Big Ten soccer tournament and beat Indiana 3-1 to in Piscataway. And the Big Ten tournament starts November 3rd. The top eight teams in the conference battling it out for a Big Ten men's soccer championship. Indiana will be in the tournament looking for the seeding as they go into these final two matches. What is at stake as Indiana heads into this tournament and beyond? Well, you talk about what's at stake, Ian, a massive streak for the Hoosiers. It's been 37 years. It was 1986, the last time that Indiana missed the NCAA tournament. Almost 40 years ago was that last time. So failing to win the Big Ten tourney and not winning against Trine and or Rutgers means you've got to win that tourney. You have to make a deep run against tough opponents. There's a lot of good teams in the Big Ten. Indiana has kind of struggled against some of them, especially Northwestern. They're probably the favorites, along with Michigan State, heading into the Big Ten tourney. You have to win out if you don't win against Rutgers. So that's the huge streak at risk. It's all to play for for Indiana. They've got a lot of work to do. Who knows what's going to happen? It's going to be a fun watch in Big Ten soccer as we head into the end of the season. But that'll do it for us here on this edition of Indiana Men's Soccer Weekly, presented by Big Ten Plus. For Andrew Hillsman, I'm Ian Plaskoff. See you next time. I felt like I knew what the outcome was already going to be. <laughs> I just felt apathetic, disinterested, because, again, it just we reached a bottoming out point. That was IU student Joe Waddell. He's disappointed by another losing season from Indiana University football. The program with the most losses in Division I football history decided it was time for a change. Yeah, it's pretty simple. I win. Google me. A web search of new IU football coach Kurt Signetti will show a long history of winning. He led James Madison University to 52 wins and only nine losses over a five-year span. Indiana Rivals sports writer Zach Browning believes Signetti's success will translate at IU. He's a winner. He's never had a losing season anywhere that he's been a head coach. He was on the staff or on a staff at Alabama under Nick Saban. He's been around the block. He's been successful everywhere he's been, and he's a guy that is not going to take this lightly, and he's going to work hard and try and bring this Indiana program to at least Big Ten prominence. IU student fans share a renewed optimism. But, I mean, when I talk to people about the football team, they are a little bit more positive and are expecting a bowl game next year, which is kind of crazy. So, like, I think it is definitely a new energy here. Signetti's transfer class ranks number seven in the nation and number one in the Big Ten. His philosophies resonate with high-level recruits and transfers. We're not the greatest, but I think with the, the new coach and his history at JMU, I think we have the potential to be great. Um, maybe win a championship. <laughs> maybe. Even though Signetti hasn't been on campus for long, IU students are still able to pick up on his identity. Winner. Energetic. Electric. Confident. There is still work to do to improve this program. Signetti is confident he can do it in the short term. He makes the promise that, quote, soon our wins will not be considered upsets. He's been able to win pretty much everywhere. He's confident that he can do it here. Now he has to deliver. There's no better opponent to make history against since the in, than the in-state rivalry of the Purdue Boilermakers and Mackenzie Holmes averaging over 20 points a game. I don't think there's any chance that it doesn't happen. Sunday afternoon at Simon Scott Assembly Hall. House is going to be packed, no doubt, to see history get made. It should be an exciting one. 
Well, whether it's going to the game, watching it, or just listening on the radio, definitely should have eyes or ears on a potentially historic performance by Mackenzie Holmes. Be sure to follow along with BTN to, for all things Indiana Athletics. The backstretch of the season for Indiana women's basketball is here as March looms close, and guard play is incredibly important. Grace Berger's no longer a part of the Indiana women's basketball program, so Andrew, I have to ask, who's the one stepping up at the guard? It's got to be the point guard, Chloe Moore McNeil. That's my choice for the Hoosiers leader going into the postseason. Off the back of a triple-double performance against the Michigan State Spartans, she's played an excellent brand of basketball in Big Ten play, and I, I think that's going to continue well into the postseason. She's going to be the rock for Indiana late into March. Certainly a lot of fun games to watch in the backstretch of the season before the madness truly begins. Make sure you're following along with BTN for all things Indiana Athletics.